Hello. Today we are going to talk about extrema and function analysis. We previously talked about domains and discontinuity, and this kind of falls in more uh, uh, continuing with functions and kind of how they operate. So what we first want to talk about is absolute maximum and absolute minimum. Absolute maximum or absolute minimum is the absolute, like, I mean, it's kind of in the title, highest or lowest point, okay? So someone says they've got the absolute, they're talking about the highest or the lowest point. Sorry if that, there you go. All right, relative maximum or minimum is a point that is higher or lower, higher or lower than points surrounding it, like immediately surrounding it. So then the points immediately surrounding it. So what does that really mean? Well, here we've got a graph, it's not a real pretty graph, but it is one. This would be our absolute maximum, right? It's the absolute highest point of this whole entire graph. This would be a relative maximum, and you might hear it also called a local maximum or minimum. I'm gonna use these words interchangeably, so that's what it will be. This. Because we have, this goes off into negative infinity, this is actually a relative minimum, okay? And an absolute maximum is also a relative maximum. So it's also a relative maximum, or you could say a local maximum. But basically, that's what these are. So when we talk about finding the minimum or maximum, we are finding the y value of the point. So the x value is not part of it. Um, it can help with finding the, the point with the local, but the location, I should say location, it can help with finding the location, but it really isn't necessarily part of it. So here we are asked to find the coordinate points of the extrema in each function and classify its, uh, what's it say? It's tight. Okay, so let's go to our calculator. I'm going to try my best to use a calculator or this, um, what am I saying here? Inspire calculator. So I need to go to my f function and I have 0 0.05 uh, x to the sixth. I'm going to pause while I type this in because this is boring. Okay, we're back. So I graphed it. And as you can see here, um, oh my gosh, what's happening now? Well, whatever. So guys, really, I'm not great at the Inspire. But here is our graph. And you can see that it, um, it we just have that's what I wanted to get rid of the tab. It, it's not fitting in the window very well. So what we can do is we can go to menu and then you're going to go to window and window and zoom are kind of similar. So if you do zoom fit and then hit enter, um, see it'll fit the entire thing in there, but that actually doesn't help us that much. So what we can do instead is go to menu, window, and then we can kind of do um, it, if I, we go to our window settings, then we can set our values. So let's say that our Y minimum will do like, I don't know, a negative 50, our maximum would be 50, and we'll stick with negative 10 and 10 for X and see what this looks like. So if we graph that, Okay, so that, that's looking a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna give it one more try here. So our window setting, it's not gonna be negative 50. Wait, where'd it go? Gosh, this thing. One. I need to have probably negative 70 there. 
and that should work okay. Let's hope. Okay, yeah, good. We've got our graph. There it is. Well, guess what? I already drew it here. So I should have known better since I already had it there. But anyway, we want to classify our local maximum, our local minimum, and our absolute minimum. So we can look at this graph. We can see kind of what these are going to be, but we want to actually trace them. So what we can do is go to menu, and then I think it's trace. Nope. It is... Gosh, pause. All right, I figured it out. So we go to your menu and then you go to analyze graph and let's we're gonna calculate our um, a minimum. So what it wants is your lower bound. So you're going to move the calculator left. So we're trying to get that point right there. So I'm gonna hit enter. Then my upper bound. And on the 89, this says left and right. So hopefully, gosh, this takes a while. It kind of matches up. As you know, I'm more comfortable with the, or whatever it is, an 84. And then enter again. And then it should calculate. And it gives us our minimum. So negative 2.58, comma negative 42.3. So, so we have a local minimum at negative 2.58, comma negative 42.3. Great, and we can do that again. I'm gonna, well, I'll do another one. So let's do one more, even though it's not really interesting to watch me. Let's do our maximum. Again, we're gonna have a lower bound. So I'm gonna go to the left there. Then we're gonna have an upper bound. Does it go faster this way? Probably not. This thing. Okay, and hit enter. Gosh, most of this video is just going to be watching me move things on a calculator. Dumb. And then we get our maximum. So we got, did it calculate it? Oops. I'm gonna pause this again. Okay, I don't even know if you can see, but I've been doing it a little bit better. Um, and so then now I'm actually calculating our maximum. I think I had it wrong before. It says it's zero, zero, okay. So we've got a local, or this time I'm gonna call it a relative maximum. Again, these are the same things at zero, zero. And then we can find our absolute minimum at, I'm gonna pause so you don't have to watch me type in the calculator. Okay, and you can see here, we got our absolute minimum at 4.17 comma negative 58.7. Okay, so a lot of calculator work when we're finding these. All right, let's continue on. So we've got uh, different situations that we might encounter. So if we have a closed endpoint, like in this type of a graph, this closed endpoint is going to be a relative maximum, okay? So the closed endpoint would be relative maximum or minimum because it's the, high, uh, it's the highest or lowest thing surrounding everything. Um, right here, we would have a relative minimum, okay? But if we have an open endpoint, this is actually just nothing. It's not a relative maximum or a relative minimum. It could be a limit like we talked about before, but it's nothing here. Here, if we have a jump discontinuity, this, right, this point here would be a relative minimum, but this point here would be a relative maximum, right? But again, that whole, that's gonna be nothing, okay? All right, let's put all this together by talking about function analysis, which is just when we analyze a function. So here we're given a function, we're asked to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, holes, absolute maximum min or minimum, local maximum or minimum, not necessarily the absolute, where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, our left end and our right end behavior. So I'm gonna put that in the calculator, I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our graph here. Kind of can't see, I guess, because 
I had a light on there. But all right, so we've got our graph here. First, we can find our domain. Set that aside for a second. So our domain, we're going to take what's under the radical, that 4 minus x, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means negative x is greater than or equal to 0. So, or sorry, to negative 4. Why did I write 0 there? Negative 4, so x is less than or equal to 4. So that is our domain, right? We've talked about that before. For vertical asymptotes, we have none, okay? For holes, we have none. No holes, no vertical asymptotes, because uh, we don't really have a denominator. For our absolute minimum and absolute maximum, if I look here uh, and I trace, or not trace, but I, I analyze my graph, I'm going to find our minimum here. So we've got an absolute minimum because, there it goes, um, this actually ends, right? So I'm going to go here. There's my lower bound, and I need to make my upper bound if that will come back. There we go. And we hit our upper bound, and then we get a minimum at, there's just so much going on in here. Dang it. All right, so I just zoomed in a bunch of times, and actually we can see here uh, that we have a minimum here at, and it's kind of hard to see, but it's actually at y equals zero. So we have an absolute minimum at y equals zero, okay? And then we have a local maximum and a local minimum. I'm gonna pause again. Okay, I'm gonna have a local minimum here and a local maximum here, and you can just calculate that, because, but I did it before. So we have a local uh, minimum at y equals 0 0.996 and a local maximum at y equals 5.035, okay? So when is this increasing and decreasing? Well, it's increasing from like around here, okay, up to about here. So that is actually, I went from 0 0.064 to 3.136. And then we're decreasing from, remember our graph was all the way out there. So we're decreasing from negative infinity down to the 0 0.064. Okay, from negative infinity, 0 0.064. And then again, from here, that 3.0, Three one or one three six down down all the way to four. So from three point one three six to four. Okay. Now, last thing we want to talk about is our end behavior. And what is end behavior? End behavior is just what's the graph doing when it's ending. Okay. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit more here. All right. So from our left end behavior, left end behavior. It's actually just going up. So the way we write this is actually using that limit notation. So our left end behavior is that the limit as x goes to negative infinity, which is our left end, negative infinity up here, is of f of x is equal to infinity. So as x goes out to negative infinity, that y is going up to positive infinity, right? But our right end behavior the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x. Well, as this goes off, what well, says there's actually nothing's happening here, right? So we can just say not applicable, okay? All right, that was a lot of me doing things on the calculator, which is not interesting, but hopefully it did help kind of explain how to use that. Um, and I can help you practice more in class, but I will see you then. Have a good day.